Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum. Today we have a few things going on. You are probably wondering what happened to the Ford GT, which has been notably absent now for a short while. Of course, the Senna went away for its service, came back in the last vlog. The GT is not back yet, and we don't think it's going to be back for a while. And we will explain all with that. We also today have quite a few things to show you guys. Plus, we've got a delivery of some IKEA furniture, which means we are going to become IKEA flat pack builders today or something like that to see some things to basically use as display cabinets for all of the piles of Lego that are currently sitting on the floor in the office. Um, ordered a few things online in connection with the F1 car as well, which are probably going to take up a lot of space when this keeps developing. We'll see how all of that goes. So let's crack on with a day at the Museum. There are a lot of things I've been ordering recently. I've got a little bit carried away. Um, some of the stuff here, we've got some calendars from Tech Art and from Roof. We'll get those up at some point in the future. And then in here, we have, well, firstly, the huge piles of Lego that all need to be popped away somewhere. A printer, finally, small things in life, but we need. Then here, some very exciting things to go through. Firstly, I'm feeling very Zenvo branded at the moment, for good reason, of course. But hey, in this, we have a rather lovely 1 to 18 TSRS. This is one of the specifications, obviously, that's already been built. It is the car that came to visit the Sch Museum, and I think we're going to be able to make those as well in the colours that I've gone for, which I've recently shown, which should be pretty cool as well. We also have, as I said, a few F1-themed things, including a Heinz Harald Frentzen FW19, which is obviously the plan at the moment for what we're going to do with the car that's sitting outside. And this will obviously fit in the model car cabinet. I need to find a clever way to display all the model cars, because I've got so many of those. So we'll get to that down the line. And this is something really cool, if I can find it really 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 cool that is a scrutineering sticker from the Villeneuve FW19 in 97 at the Monaco Grand Prix which obviously doesn't literally come out of our car but it's just a cool thing that connects to it this however is huge now with a very big garage space in fact I think I'm going to actually try and squeeze out past where we now have our Michelin man proudly displayed on the wall in this space out here, we have a lot of kind of railings and purlins around the walls to hang things. I've just realized how dirty the RS3 is. That's hilarious. That is a complete filthy mess. Okay, we'll worry about that later. So this, which we found online, Tom found online. Oh gosh, it's actually huge. Okay. Is a gigantic, 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 gigantic FW19 which we'll have to hang somewhere. That's really cool, actually. I like that. So I've now made a complete mess of it. I need to see it for myself. But that's the kind of thing we're gonna to have to have hanging lots of around this room as we go forwards. We've just had a delivery from Ikea, some tables and some cabinets. And I suppose in an unfortunate Ikea fashion, we have actually missed one. I ordered four of these which come in the two parts of boxes and only three have turned up. But step one is going to be to get all this stuff inside and it's absolutely freezing today. It's quite cold in there as well. So we'll probably do the assembly in the office, I would imagine. Plus some chairs and table legs and other things. Yeah, and it's pretty windy. So we'll get everything in. We're going to take them all through to the office and go and get some uh, IKEA flat pack building underway. Before we get to that, a very quick run out with the GT8. This has been sitting here without a full tank. Now, this is a small thing, but I quite like that the cars are parked up with full tanks of fuel. Generally, if you're not going to drive a car all that often, it's better for it to have a fairly full tank as opposed to an empty tank, because technically petrol dissolves in air. So if you have an empty tank, you run the risk of there not being very much left at the end. Plus, it's always good, obviously, when you then do want to drive something that you've got a full tank ready and raring to go. So generally speaking, plus who doesn't want to go for a run out in the GT8? It's always epic. So we will take this very quickly for a little run around the block, which means a nice noisy start to get things rolling. I haven't driven this car for a short while, but epic as always. So we'll head on out then in just a second and go um, have some fun with the GT8. I have not driven this for far too long that I've almost forgotten how epic it is. The sound of this car, it is absolutely to die for. This thing is mega.
Right, we're parked, so we need to put it back onto the smart charger. But now comes the moment of, did Brad line me up straight? That's not too bad. I'm all right with that. The lines on the floor don't go straight, which doesn't help life either. But that's all right for now. We're building away. And when I say we, I mean me. I'm helping. <laughs> you have, Tom, you have a hammer and we're dealing with glass shelves. Um, I'll put the hammer away. I'm not necessarily sure we've got this right. The first bits we're trying to attach. <laughs> have you read the instructions? Uh, we've tried. They're not, uh, they're actually genuinely, they're not very helpful this time around. There's no. four different poles, all with different configurations of holes and the diagrams make them look all exactly the same. So I think this could be a case of trial and error. Mostly like error. Yeah, I think this is right now making progress. Job done. You're right there, Brad. You yep. fell over me. I've got my balance. It's <laughs> fine. I don't think anyone would have seen that on camera. Hopefully. No, I wish they could have done that. <laughs> it's quite funny. Eventually, we're going to have a cabinet for the Lego. Tim, those are very bright socks. They are. Recognise the theme? No, no idea. Silk cup, Jaguar, race cars. It was a joke. Next. <laughs> <laughs> what you didn't see was Brad looking at me and shaking his head going, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, right? I do, I do, yes. <laughs> yes, the Le Mans young. with the famous livery. Yes. When, when did that race? When did it race? Yeah, what year? I would say it was probably late 90s. Was I born? Probably only just. Late 90s. Well, oh God, he's that young. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know who Henry VIII is? Yes. Were you born when he was around? So don't give me that excuse. History. Was I taught it in? Was I taught it in school? No. And uh, you weren't taught this in school either, so you should be. No, no. I mean Henry. Knowledgeable. No. Right now. I do we? Do we? Yes. You know those things that we keep putting in the last three videos where a funny screen comes up and it makes a loud noise. I've been asked to come down and film. I don't know what's, gonna happen, what's going on here. Well, <laughs> you know when we said the instructions weren't necessarily the clearest in the world? Mm -hmm. Guess who's got it wrong? Us. You. Tom's gonna say I'm you. following his instruction. We're struggling. We're doing the best we can. I mean, it looks like something's coming together. It does, but it seems like it's come together incorrectly and we are now taking it back apart. Yes, by coming oh. together, you mean not coming together. Being taken apart. <laughs> yes, I didn't realise that. <laughs> so we'll take that and... Can we just pop that down onto the glove? No, That's no. not a good idea. <laughs> Here for now. So what have you done wrong? Do you know? No. Well, all four corner legs are actually different. So you have to have each one in the right place. And we had the base backwards because it's not very obvious. This looks kind of promising, I think. Maybe. There's glass being involved. <laughs> Let's go and see. See what is going on. Are we all good? We're making some progress. It seems to be lining up this time. There we go. It's going to fit some Lego, shall we? Nope, not there. Where's it? Just, just there. Oh, there is. Okay. Watch the glass. Oh, now we've got to screw some more things in. Yeah, it's more screwing to be done. More probably getting things wrong. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Let's hope nothing goes wrong with the next two bits of glass. I am filming. <laughs> okay, so I was just trying to go to, I was going to film. That's staying in. <laughs> that is definitely staying in. I was going to film and do a, a bit of David Attenborough. Here we see two wild males in their natural habitat attempting to build flat pack furniture. But as you would have seen, um, Tim dropped that panel, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Uh, have they? Have you broken it? Have they broken it? Uh, have, they, have they broken it? We need the hammer. What have you done, Tom? Oh, okay. This does not sound good. Anyway, we'll. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll join you in a minute. Okay. No, we won't. What? What is going on? I don't know what they've done, but yeah, now we'll cut. We fixed it, we fixed it, it's good. See, you only need one tool in life, people. Just one. That's it. Solves every problem. This is the last piece. We've made it. 
the final piece of glass is going in. Oh, <laughs> something's going to go wrong, isn't it? Probably. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully not. Done, done. Oh, you know what did go wrong? Open it. Fingerprints? Fingerprints. Oh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to rotate it slightly. Can we do this? Which should we put in there first? And then we're going to go put in a Lego car. Let Tom get one. Wait. Tom, you get the Lego. No, 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 no. Before we do this, I'm going to go and get our Topaz glass cleaner and I'm going to clean the shelves. You're going to get a Lego car. Okay. Oh, wait, no, he's getting one right there. Well, yes. try it. Okay, I'll clean them up. Why the shard? Why the shard? Sh 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 yeah. Why the Sion? Did you call it a shard? Almost. Okay, that looks quite good. Boom. That. That does look quite good. Sion, Sheeran, GT3 RS in one shelf, one cabinet. That would be cool. We've got to build the Sheeran though, right guys? That takes about 14 hours. Let's get started. Tomorrow? Um, Another time? He doesn't look impressed. Yeah, yeah, no. Let me get the GT3 RS. Okay. <laughs> 14 hours. Yeah, to make, well. I would say 16, I have done it before. Yeah. It took These, me 16. This is about 10, that I think we timed at 13 or something. Yeah, mine was 16 non-stop hours. So well, not this, non-stop. Is this a challenge? Are we now gonna try and beat the time? Hey, what's going in the middle shelf? The Chiron. He just said the Chiron. We're talking about building it. Ah, well, why don't we put something else in there for now? Or should we build another cabinet? This is a shambles. We'll figure out what we're going to do and we'll be back in a minute. We have finished assembling the second cabinet. That's now filled with Lego, but we will crack on and do the third and the tables and shuffle things around in a moment. For now, we should probably get on to the topic at hand. Where is the Ford GT? Now, like the Senna, shortly before Christmas, the car went to Ford for its third year service because it was at Christmas 2018 when I took delivery of them one day after the other, quite literally, which was absolutely insane. Now, the GT had actually been registered a couple of weeks before that, I think on the 1st of December 2018, prior to me taking delivery while it was going through the pre-delivery inspection and that stuff, which meant that at the end of November 2021, the car went back to Ford to have its thorough third year service. And when I say thorough, there's no extended warranty on the GT. So when it gets to three years old, you want that car fully looked at to make sure that everything is running properly which meant that they took a bit of time to carefully go through it, to find any parts that have been suffering even the slightest bit of wear, to look at those, investigate whether they need to be replaced and obviously get them done. The problem with it has been that there have been some major global shortages of shipping availability and parts. So the few parts that my car has needed from Canada or from the US or from wherever they've come from, have taken a little bit longer than we would have hoped. So the car is still there. It will be there for a little bit longer we're waiting on one thing in particular, which is going to take another two or three weeks to be manufactured. Then I think it takes two or three weeks to get it to the UK. Then it has to be assembled and the car returned. So it'll be gone for a bit, which does mean it will be away for three or four months, but it's probably worth it for the longevity, for the long term, and it's winter anyway, so what's the point? Plus, we're going to have some construction in here and some other things, which, you know, the fewer cars we have around, ultimately, the better that's going to be. So the GT has been away far longer than I would have liked, but it's part and parcel of using the cars. I've driven it on the Nürburgring, I've had fun with it, Autobahn, everything. So I wanna make sure that these cars are maintained properly. Now you might notice beside me is a football. I came back the other day to, well, I was sent a video clip of this being punted across the barn by a car, by the GR Yaris. For some reason, we are literally here with an oversized football in the garage. Why not, hey? Boom! <laughs> now, you might be thinking that's a really, really bad idea, but at the end of the day, this isn't gonna damage anything at all. <laughs> he says. <laughs> it's super soft and I'm not worried because the cars are all PPF'd and protected anyway. Um, so yes, we've been playing football in the garage, quite literally, and having fun. Good times. Another thing I've talked about a lot is the progress we're making with the mezzanine. It is all planned, the basic structure, the metalwork, and the flooring is all lined up. We measured it out, we had some fun. You probably remember that. The one final thing that I'm trying to decide is exactly how high to go. Now, there are a few implications. If you look at the wall, we've got the purlin that runs up there which is always gonna be there. We've got the big fan. Now we do have permission to take that out. Obviously it's helpful to run if, let's say, some engines have been running in here. It's helpful to have that. 
So we've got to be aware of the height of it, but obviously the higher you go means two things. Number one, the length of the staircase. There's like an industry standard that you have to follow in terms of step length and height. But number two, if you think about here and this end, if we're running right up to that height, which is higher than a normal floor would be, a typical, let's say the room below height would be two meters 40 plus 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters for the flooring from floor height to um, mezzanine floor. If we go all the way up to that, we're running about 25 centimeters over that and we lose some headroom above. So the two things I want to work out are firstly from, let's say here to, this is really hard to work out, but to that edge. And this thing is, it's gonna be approximate. Yeah, we had 293 written down. So if we go to that, the next step is what do you hit your head on? So if we're about here, it's gonna be that metal there. There we go. 485, 485, 293. So we're just shy of two meters, 192. So that will feel quite claustrophobic at that point. Now, obviously there's again, the side topic, which is how far into the room is that? Three meters 40 in. So maybe the room can start at that, three meters 40 in, but obviously anything this end of that is gonna have to be storage because it's not gonna work for anything else, like a low weird storage room for dumping some boxes and things. And then anything this way is gonna be totally fine up to this point. At that end, it would be completely fine to begin with, I think. I'm gonna go and double check it. These are the sanity checking things, dangerous with footballs around, that you don't really think about. You're just kind of in your head, why would you have to worry about this? This feels like it's gonna be way tall enough. So let's just check it on that metal, oh gosh, like here. 561, yeah, so that's plenty of room above. That's plenty, plenty of room. So the only thing to watch out for is what's gonna happen over there. So I need to communicate back exactly how high we're gonna do it, but I think it will just be cleaner to have it at this level. Obviously we'll have to change a few things like the fire exit sign over there and we'll have to move some of the cables and stuff that we've got around, but none of that's too complicated and it will work out with the right result. Back in here, it's pretty dark, but we have our three cabinets. This one is the wrong way around at the moment and we've filled up lots of the Lego. And to be honest, this is gonna work really quite nicely. It's Ikea but it's perfect. This is the thing, right? Especially while we've got the temporary set up, it does the job. But I think even on a permanent basis, that will do the job. You know, to have a whole run of these in a line, really nice way of displaying all of the Lego. Um, another random thing I wanted to grab out of a bag here to show you quickly, because I've got a ton of random stuff. This is all car rags and things that I've been building up at home. In this one, perfectly suited to the current weather, we have Brabus Wellies. Yes, Brabus wellies. Those came from the amazing day out with the Brabus adventure a while back. Um, pretty much needed with the weather we have around at the moment. And then I've got a random Xbox controller. Welcome to life. I, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know. Do we have more Lego? Yes, I've got more Lego in here. Okay, we've got to get some more Lego. What do we have? Formula E, Porsche car. I completely forgot that I've been on another Lego buying binge. This is the best one. The GT500 in Grab a Lime. That's gonna have to get made ASAP, to be honest. And a bit of a change from the GT500, which is a brutally aggressive car, to the Fiat 500 in blue. We already have the yellow one, but they've made it in blue as well. So we're gonna have to have a full on Lego building day because those, plus all the other stuff, plus the Chiron, plus who knows what else is gonna fill like 10 of these. In this random bag, I've got tow ropes, ratchet straps, and these were all from when I took a Christmas tree on the roof of the GT8, a couple of years ago actually now. But all of these kind of things that have accumulated over the years that obviously need to be kept because you never know when you might need them in the future and exactly why this whole area here is gonna become the permanent storage in the future for all of this stuff, all of the spare in-car things. I just bought a few more windscreen mounts and USB cables and that kind of stuff. But also all of the wheels, tires, body panels, and those things. And with the arrival of that rather lovely tapestry to hang up on the wall, we've kind of had our brains running a little bit today to pretty much cover, test it with the whole of one wall with a bunch of things like that hanging. And then maybe we end up doing the whole place. Just brings in even more color. 
but a kind of cool garage vibe and that's obviously part of the feeling of this place so that's pretty much going to be the plan for now i'm not going to bring you in here because it's a complete mess but i'm going to go put these away one last task we're going to move the center so we're going to shuffle the center closer to the 675 obviously when we brought it back from the service it was just to kind of dump it and park it and we're also because you have to put it in race mode just to look a little bit prettier um, so the plan is that will move closer to the lt the gt will come back in here eventually um, I think going down into race mode for the moment. There's a lot of space the other side of the 675, which is where eventually the GT Black Series will be back. Perfect. But for now, given the Clio is there and it's a lot smaller, it's just going to have a bit of space around it. Yeah, that's about where we want it. So that moved. Is this where I'm going to make him do the Vantage Roadster as well? He doesn't know that yet. He's probably doing race mode. Let's see in a second. We're gonna do it. Vantage Roads to time. <laughs> I think that was a watch talking. Um, Tom's a little bit tall for this car, which means he's not the biggest fan of having to move it, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work, we'll make it work. Straight that way, that way, that way, that way. Straight back, basically, with a little touch of this way. Do, 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 straight, perfect. So the plan here is that everything just staggers around a curve, basically. Do, 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 stop. Cool. And that will give us a little bit more space than we currently have. Just the 675 needs to come a touch forward. Anyway, I guess for today at the Schmuseum, the Ford GT is away, as I said. It's been missing for a while. It'll be missing for a little while longer, but eventually it is going to return. We've assembled some more cabinets and things. We've got lots of things done in terms of measuring stuff and that side of it. But yeah, basically, another day from here at the Schmuseum. Until next time.